Sabres Live is presented by Seneca Resorts and Casinos. Nothing else comes close. We are going to overtime! What if they win? Man, words to take away from this week, this weekend, and probably keep tucked somewhere close to you moving forward just inspirational is all i can say marty about our time and that's collectively our organization our peers our colleagues that we were able to spend celebrating ryan miller these last few days i already have my banner on uh, on my uh, wall next to rj it so took good. henrik lundquist the spot sorry hang but i had to do 30 it for 30 for 30 30 for 30. Absolutely. So yes, Miller's banner is on my wall and I love what if they win because we've seen a lot over the last many years, t-shirts. Why not us? Right? Like we against the world, this whole thing, but, but almost, I don't want to say it as a negative thing, but why not us? Like, it's almost like, well, everybody's against us. Why not us? And when Ryan Miller in the first intermission Saturday afternoon, came on the uh, the desk with you and I, Duffer, and was talking about the experience of going on the ice after the game Thursday night and being by the bench and his son Bodie saying, but dad, what if they lose? It's 2-2 and we're here. What if they lose? And Ryan looked at him and said, what if they win? And that's been Ryan's like positive outlook and everything that he's accomplished. Like this first time, in the building, looking at the banners and thinking, what if I have my banner there one day? And being in the crease, there was no ice, but they put a net, right? When he came to first sign his contract, thinking, what if I, I, I make it to the NHL? And what if when Dominic Ashik's banner went up to the, the, the rafters, what if mine one day gets there? Like the positiveness in the message uh, fantastic and as a goalie it's always like don't give up the next goal don't don't mess up don't ryan's m like mentality was always make the next save mm -hmm. right make the next save not the negative don't give up the next goal make the next save what if they win what if we win what like it's just it was amazing it really and just to you know think back to him coming to the arena for the first time and signing the contract and being on the arena floor in summertime where there's no ice, but just that net that you spoke of, that's how they reenacted telling Ryan yeah. this year that he was going to be going into the Sabres hall of fame and have his number inducted. His family was out there on the floor. We were fortunate as staff members to witness it. Mm -hmm. So that in itself shows you the detail that went into this celebration of ryan miller and you you know how many people are involved in this we are so proud of everyone we work with that this was full 360 magnificent like nobody missed a touch what was one of the first things you and i heard about as soon as we walked out of the arena that the stars of the show were the ice crew for yeah. making sure that everything got turned around. Andy Chamberlain and his group, you know, that everything was able to, to, to get hastened a little bit after the speeches because they were running just a little bit behind. But yep. you can't find a single person that didn't win the moment because of how everybody came together. And I know that it, 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 I don't want it to sound like we're, you know, pumping tires on that, like... It's... Well, people don't know, Duffer, last year you took part of RJ's rehearsal and the ceremony. I was on the desk, right, during mm -hmm. for the pregame and all of that. I hadn't seen what a rehearsal for an event like this looked like. Mm -hmm. This year I took part of it. So on Wednesday, we had a four and a half hour rehearsal, right? And so you have to deal with every detail. And the employees, the interns, everybody that took part of it just to be, hey, I'm Paul Gostad today. I'm Tim Conley. I'm Terry Pagula. I'm Kevin Adams. And when we introduced everybody, they acted as they were those people. We went through this whole ceremony, what, three times, I think, in all togetherness. And, and But it's not – I didn't realize how much work went into it. I thought, yeah – Game uh, game presentation is doing an amazing job. Our TV crew to be able to capture, but to the to the to all the angles for the TV camera. Hey, 
you know what? Like I was supposed to stand in one spot. And then all of a sudden they're like, Marty, you're going to have to stand on the other side because you're in the shot from when Ryan is going to walk to the, to the banner. And you kind of look like you're photobombing it. Oh, great detail. Right. Like, but, but if you don't go through the whole thing, you don't know that. And I had never been part of a rehearsal this detailed oriented and the, the Thursday night ceremony is is what it is and perfect and beautiful because of the work of so many and the detail in all of it. And as you can imagine, there are so many layers to it. Rehearsal is long, but there's a lot of time in between because yeah. every 10 minutes they're working on something else. So you just stand there patiently waiting for your turn, but you're also, you know, you're you're collectively feeling it all together. It's quite a process. And it didn't dawn on me until yesterday, actually, that like we live in this, you know, broadcast world where we're kind of tethered, right? Like yeah. we're, we're we always have someone in our ear, right? So if something really is about to go catastrophically wrong, you're going to get some guidance yeah. because somebody's going to tell you. And your awareness. I mean, you might see, you know, something burning off to the side. Or... A, a black screen in front of you. Oops, we're off the air. But but it <laughs> dawned on me yesterday that this was actually performing without a net. Yeah. Because if something misfires, nobody's telling you. Nobody's able to scream to you, go on to the next, right? And it's just so weird because if I was to ever think of it that way, I'd be a bundle of nerves more than I have been at times in my life. Let's put it that way. You know, so I I was like, wow, this is this is really cool. And then the most unscripted, although scripted, but you know what I mean here. Like the award-winning performance of the night goes to the man himself who did not miss a single detail. And I went back and I yeah. watched it in its entirety. His eye contact, his points of reference, his mannerisms, his every single thing that Ryan Miller said meant that much more to everybody he was talking about because he delivered it with absolute perfection. I, I'm astounded that it could have gone that well. As Miller was, and I should say Millsy or Ryan or what, you know, as he was as a player, extremely emotional, but focused and contained and delivering was always a ski, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like this was an extremely emotional moment. And uh, the Ryan Miller, the Sabres Hall of Famer and Jersey retired Ryan Miller showed up like it was a game. Like he was precise. He knew exactly where he wanted to go, how the, to bring the crowd together and the, his teammates together and his family together and his friends together. Uh, the comment about him beating the Leafs was fantastic. Oh. His first meeting with Terry Barbeau, his goalie coach, uh, when he played midget at the Pizza Hut. Like, it's like, like unbelievable moments, right? Um, Reaction when he mentioned Tom Galassano. Yes. His, like, again, if he hadn't have, who would have said anything? It wouldn't have been intentional, but his recognition of the moment that the only reason he is standing there in that moment is because when the club was in control of the NHL, mm -hmm. Tom Golisano saved the team. And right? he did mention Gary Bettman and yeah. the fact that they own the team. It's it's amazing and though. Larry Quinn, uh how even last year when Ryan was an it was came into town for the Buffalo um Greater Sports Buffalo Hall of Sports Fame. Greater, yeah. Greater Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame. And we all got together that night, a bunch of guys started the group tax. Hey, who's in town? Who wants to come out? We're going to go to, um, you know, the brew house across the street, Labatt's, and we're going to just hang out. Right. And Larry Quinn was there. He showed up and he was hanging out with all of us because he was a big part of that. And I know there was some, you know, obviously, uh, you know, you make some decisions and people are like, oh, you, you, you messed that up. Whatever. It doesn't matter in the end. Like he was a big part of where Buffalo, the Sabres are right now because they saved the club and Millsy is here because the club was saved. And I thought his recognition of that was perfect. Uh, his recognition of, 
of Don Granado and Kevin Adams to have allowed him to come in and, and impact the players and, and feel that again, because you missed that as a player, the locker room and, and being able to do that. Um, mentioning Craig Anderson and Eric Comrie, which he's known for a while um, is, was cool. So yeah, there was definitely a, a, a really heartfelt um, 10, 12, 15 minutes speech for Millsy. It was supposed to be, Within 10 minutes, and I think it went a little long. So that's good. We loved it. We, yes, <laughs> and it could have gone on. And uh, by the sounds oh. of it, Ryan would love to come back and talk more, but uh, not from that standpoint, but uh, to lend his knowledge. And we'll look forward to that down the road. One word that you take away from all of this Ryan Miller pageantry. Team. Team is the word. Teammates coming back, the way the team responded, the fan base and the team together as one big team, like the Western New York Buffalo mm -hmm. team. Um, that's what I took. I took from it. Oh, mine, mine and, is... and Thursday night was also team, but that I got I, it was way too late. I can't remember any of it. <laughs> mine is parenting. Oh, yeah, because it's yeah. everything like this is a word I never would have thought of. Yeah. In conjunction with all of this, but the way he, like, just when you go back and watch, look at some of the moments where Bodie is enjoying it so much. Yeah. Look at what Noreen was dealing with the entire time in Kaya and how a small child, <laughs> yes. a year old, right? Not even. Um it was tough, but it never, they were just in full control. And then to have the follow-up, you know, storytelling from Ryan about his moment with Bodie and what if they win and the puck drop and everything. I just, I was amazed. Parenting, there is no script. There are immense challenges and we all make a ton of mistakes. But, oh. if, but these are two people who in their own right are celebrities as viewed by others. And they couldn't have been more down to earth and practical and incredible with their children under massive spotlights. I thought it was amazing. And, and often we hear the stories, right, of athletes that were raised by a single dad or a single mom and went through hardships and it, it, it happens. But also, I mean, I know my parents, my mom and dad had a huge impact and my and my brother's career and life and how they used to split up for hockey tournament and baseball tournament because one was with one, one was with the other. We had hotels or motels halfway in between the two cities. It was like, and what Ryan recognized is mom and dad. Like I got tear die because I looked at Dean, uh, Mr. Miller, and I'm like, oh boy. And his mom was like crying. And I, but also the moment of fun that he had with when he said well they must have have a master's in management uh time management because there's four kids and there's two that traveled a lot following drew and ryan around you know because of their career but the the parenting that his parents did to be able to raise such a a wonderful person and wonderful kids because they were all awesome um amazing well, this is Sabres Live Overtime, and it was fitting that on Ryan Miller night, it went to overtime, and yeah. Dylan Cousins brought the house down with uh, oh, catching the Hail Mary from Rasmus Dahlin. And when you're serious about the game, bet on Buffalo at the only sports books in Western New York. Seneca Resorts and Casinos betting counters are open daily. Self-service betting kiosks are available 24-7 at all three locations, whether you visit Seneca, Niagara, Allegheny, or Buffalo Creek. The Sports Lounge features the latest lines and multiple screens so you never miss a play. The Sports Book at Seneca Resorts and Casinos where the love of the game meets the thrill of the win. And that's the incredible takeaway, Marty. There have been terrific moments for this team this year, but this has to be the best feeling two-game winning streak, right? On the heels of a blip against Chicago where they don't yeah. secure the two points. Now they've found themselves again and we'll get into the road trip coming up, but what do you think this group takes away from these last two performances? Um, uh, we've been harping and asking for secondary scoring a lot. And yes, you know, we were able to see, um, you know, 
Tage scored in Chicago. We're able to see Tuck and Skinner get involved. But for me, it has been how the rest of the group has been able to to shine and and lift the Sabres above, right? Uh, Victor Olofsson, number one. I think what we're seeing now in the last nine games of Victor Olofsson has been probably his best hockey all season long. He's got nine, eight goals in nine games. But with Middlestead and Jost, they are starting to develop an identity. Tyson Jost has been really good. Casey, I feel, has been really good. And Victor has benefited from that. He's a shooter. Somebody else has to get him the puck, right? So in the last nine games, Victor has 29 shots on goal, 14 from the slot. In the previous seven games where he had zero goals, he had only nine shots on goal and three from the slot. So you see the difference between nine shots and 29 and how the rest of the line has been able to help him and give him the puck and put him in a position to shoot and score. I feel like that's been great. You mentioned Dylan Cousins. Uh, the 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 confidence and explosiveness as to which Cousins is playing with, even in overtime, saying, Zach Parise, I am going to go right by you and make eye contact with Darlene for that amazing pass. How about Darlene comes out of the box after his penalty uh, against the Ducks. Cousins gets the puck on the left. He didn't even know it was a forward. I thought for sure he recognized that it was Jacob Silverberg. No, he's like, I don't care if you're, you know, Victor Hedman, or Drasmus Dahlin, or Jacob Silverberg, I'm going around you. Because it was kind of a two-on-one. Mm -hmm. You could have thought he was going to slow down and give the puck. No. Bursted right around, boom, scores the first goal of the game. Like, the confidence of these two is is off the charts. I'll save more Olafson numbers for our pregame coverage on Monday night, but you and I were definitely thinking the same way. Um who else? Well, let's 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 do this now. Um, when it, as it pertains to Olafson, and I thought it was really neat of Don to single mm-hmm. out some of the maligned Sabers after the win. You know, people that have you know he knows everybody knows who's been you know those that get picked on by the yeah. critics when things aren't going well Olafson being one of them Lukanen was one of them Labushkin was one of them right mm-hmm. like um like when I thought it was really um I thought it was I thought it was great awareness by Don to to go out of his way to acknowledge just how well these guys are playing but it doesn't change the fact that there's a trade deadline coming up and people are always going to look at somebody's value and say <laughs> sell high sell high like what are you thinking? Like, is this an opportunity that they would consider moving Victor Olofsson for something that they need? I don't think so. Uh, like, what else do you need more than goals? Like, like seriously, this season, I'm not saying this team is in second in the Atlantic and uh, depth on D would help. And, you know, but, but right now, the way this team is building themselves mm-hmm. is let's have this identity that we can create offense and let's go. And Victor Olofsson, I know there's some hot and cold moment, but, but he's not what the perception I think is through most people anymore. Like he's not a power play specialist, right? Correct. Because 17, even strength goals tied for the 17. Team. And in his last nine games out of the eight goals, only one power play goal, one overtime goal, six, five on five goals. Right. So one power play goal in those eight. He's not a power play specialist anymore. He's a goal scorer. You know who else was a goal scorer that would get hot and cold? But after the fact, we're like, hey, this guy was so good for us was JP Dumont. He was back here this weekend. JP was a goal scorer. What else did you get out of JP? He didn't kill penalties. He wasn't a guy to block shots, you know, and and he wasn't the guy to create for himself all that often. Like Danny Briere, Jokin Hash, whatever, the, the line. Like he got in the slot, got the puck, boom, it's in the net. Deflection on the power play, but but he was a goal scorer. And now we look back, we're like, man, was JP so good here. But there was it's it's Victor. And Victor's got more goals than what JP produced. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it was hard on Victor and Casey at the start of the season. I'll be honest with you, because you always want more. Yeah. I really feel like they're giving you now, both of them, what you what we've been wanting and expecting. Okay. Well, you know what, if, if they are missing something, everyone says that, oh, they need more grit. They need this. They need that. Right. When it comes to a little bit more physical presence, and then we can go down the path of, well, 
what is that in today's game and how much is it even wanted in some cases by coaches, managers, whatever, right? Some some believe it to be fully important. Others don't see it that way. Yeah, That's the beauty of evaluating the game. Now, let me give you a hypothetical just, just because, right? I love it. The favorite around here, native son, Marcus Foligno, mm-hmm. as an example, right? And we also know Minnesota's cap limitations and hindrance here moving forward for the next couple of years. They're in it and they're still going to be in it. The Wild are going through a little stretch. They would love to add a little bit more offense. So Olafson and something presumably for Marcus Felino and Jordan Greenway. Okay. Would that be something that would make any sense at all? You'd be taking so- six plus million back in those two players. Minnesota would get a little relief in that sense, assuming you send Olafson and a prospect or something. Again, yeah. I'm not sitting here lobbying for this, people. Just so we're clear, this is a hypothetical based on how people hey. talk outside about this team and about the marketplace as we <laughs> get closer to the trade deadline. I'm not ready for that yet. I'm really not. And People are going to say, well, look at Tampa Bay. They went and got Pat Maroon and they got all that. Yeah, you know what? They did it when they built their structure and their foundation. And then they lost to Columbus. But they tried to go at it. They lost to Columbus. And then they said, for next year's playoffs, we are going to need to add something more. Right? And they added Maroon. They added Corey Perry. They added in that grit. But like Tampa was a top of the league team at that mm-hmm. moment until they said we need to pivot a little bit here mm-hmm. the sabers are not a top of the league team right now they there's no pivoting until you get where you want to go and you try it and if it doesn't work then you pivot right so i'm not there yet and marcus Foligno has an extra year left right yeah so does and victor seeing, so does victor greenway has two but i'm saying I, I almost feel like that, like a guy like Marcus Foligno would be more like a next season, a year from now, mm-hmm. right? Like almost a tra- trade deadline ad. Like, okay, we see where we are now. Like we're in, like next year, I'm I'm projecting. Sabres yep. are in a playoff spot. Yep. They see what's happening in the Eastern Conference and they say, oh, we're going to have to go through Boston or going to have to go through, you know, uh, Carolina and whatever. Like we... To get to where we want to go, we have to go through these teams. And we'd like to add a little toughness because playing seven games against those teams, we need to add it. Fine. Do it then. But you're not in a playoff spot now. And you're not in a in, in, in a time and place where I think that that's needed. Will it be eventually? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you don't need to figure it out now. And something funny that I thought is because of Rasmus Dallin 10 minutes, misconduct against Chicago, the whole thing. I went, I'm like, I wonder how many penalty minutes Rasmus Dallin has this year. Right? Oh my God. He's been leading the team forever in this category. He's got 60 it's... penalty minutes. I know. He's third amongst defensemen. I know. In penalty minutes this he year. He can't avoid them seemingly. Puck over the glass on Saturday. Like it's, I know. It, 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 but it's I'm amazing like, how they but keep he also, accumulating here. <laughs> he plays the game with grit. Of course and he does. Yes. dirtiness. And yes. it's only going to get even more grittier mm-hmm. and dirtier. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I don't want to say that my Norris Trophy, like hopeful, is the grid that we have. But Chris Bronger was the grid that a what lot of things had. What was wrong when Drew Doughty was doing it? Exactly. That's... I'm like, he could, he could be the grid that we need. He, of course. He, he, keep going. Yes. 100%. I love what you said about everything there. And again, it was a hypothetical. I'm really happy for Victor, and I really hope that it continues. I told you on the show post game, I said, I don't recall many, if any, goals like Victor scored for his second goal. And if he can trust himself to capitalize on small windows where a burst will let him shoot, keep doing it because he is an incredibly gifted shooter if he believes that he can, you know, take advantage of a situation. Now, speaking of situations, when the club had dropped eight in a row and then started to turn things back around, they are since that point in time, they are 16, eight and three in the last 27 games. So it's a pretty big yeah. sample, the 27 yeah. game window. And I wonder how people view it because there've been a lot of downs in that period of time, 
But 16, 8, and 3 sounds pretty good on the surface. I mean, at 16 wins, 11 losses, certainly a lot better than where you were at, which was four games below 500 before this turn. So there's now 45 games in the books, which leaves 37 to be played. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically here, so you take this last 27 game window, downgrade it a little, let them go 15, 9, and 3 instead of 16, 8, and 3. Okay. 15, 9, and 3, 15 wins, 12 losses. Doesn't seem unrealistic, right? It seems possible. It's How can possible. it not be possible? This group is, it's, <clears throat> it's shown us what it's capable of. If they did that, 15, 9, and 3 in the next 27, they would be sitting on 82 points with 10 games to go. Isn't that crazy? So then so if you, you mean have 10 a decent... games to go, that means if they were to go 500, and like yes. five and five in the last 10, they'd be 92 points. Six and four, they're 94, 94. points. Crazy, right? Like yeah. I, I'm sitting here looking at this going, what if they win? What if they win? Like all of this, I, I just, I, do you know how many times on the post game before I convinced myself to say it on Saturday? The team was 3-1-1 one, and one in the last five. It still felt like they were mired in this losing yeah. streak because of the Philadelphia game. But the games have been happening so quick here. Plus, they had lost four in a row at home. Right. But so all of a sudden, these <laughs> two games, and they're 3-1-1 one, one in the last five, and you said it, well, seven points out of ten, and you're like, 700 winning percentage. Yeah. If you ride the 700 winning percentage every five-game segment, like you're in really good shape here. Yeah, so, and anyway. also they're five, four, and one in the last ten, right? Like you go on NHL.com, you look at the last ten column, whatever, and you say five, four, and one. And sometimes you have to go to 11, 12, 13 to make it right. Yeah. But yeah. still, like the for me, the game that was the hard one to swallow, and it happens, was the Flyers game. Like mm -hmm. that's the only one. I understand the Seattle game. I understand Correct. maybe the Chicago game, the Winnipeg game, but now. Okay, so now you have this week, and I know I'm going to jump to this week because it's part of where we're going. You have Dallas, St. Louis, Winnipeg, and Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, that's a hard four-game stretch in a week, travel, trout, all of this. But at the same time, this week could make up for that Flyers game. It mm -hmm. could. You go in and you come out of there, 4-0, and 3-1, 2-1-1, one, whatever you want to put it, right? And you're like, well, that makes up for the two points against the Flyers right there. Mm -hmm. So you always yep. have that opportunity to to erase what, what wrong may have happened. But also the problem is also is this opportunity, unfortunately, on the negative side to make what happened this week disappear. And that's happened a couple of times this year for the Sabres. So I'm saying instead of saying, oh, this could go wrong. No. What if they win? Wait, hey, Dallas, what if they win? Mm -hmm. You know, St. Louis, what if they win? And then you keep on going like that. That should be a T-shirt. Yeah. Well, in time, perhaps. But, you know, you look at this this matchup this week. The only hot team of the four that they're facing is Winnipeg. They're seven and three and they just lost to the Jets. But they've beaten St. Louis. They've beaten Minnesota already this year. They haven't played Dallas yet. Fun fact. They have one win in Dallas since Ryan Miller's Vesna year. They have no wins in St. Louis since Ryan's Vesna year. <laughs> but they, while winning in Ryan's Vesna year, it wasn't Ryan. It was Patrick Laleem that got the victory <laughs> in a third period comeback win. But, you know, they, last year, if you if you can recall this, Ukul Pekalukkanen strung together his first ever two-game winning streak in the NHL with consecutive wins at Winnipeg and Minnesota. Yeah. And the you know they played the Jets well. We talked about the game this just recently here. Good game. Hellebuck was excellent. Great mm -hmm. chance to win the game. No intimidation. And their record in Minnesota all time best road winning percentage of any barn they've ever played in. They're at almost mm -hmm. seven hundred. So again, you can cut them up any way you want. Fact of the matter is, I think. You can be very realistic in your outlook for this group based on what they have shown us over a pretty significant sample size. It is, um, yeah, 
I think it's what the sample size size is what is significant now. This group has shown that there is going to be dips, right? And the the learning patterns is to these dips make them shorter and not as shallow. So if you can dip instead of dip into a minus eight, you dip to a minus six and you keep it shorter, boom, you're back up. And the next year it's a minus four, boom, back up, minus two. That's what the good teams do. They learn to just erase those longer longer dips mm -hmm. uh, and not make them as deep as they can be. And I feel like this season, even though it's only in 45 games, we've seen that now. There's yeah. a dip, but it's it's not as long and it's not as And they have completed nine of the 13 games in this window of 13 games in 22 days. Yeah. They're four, four and one. That's okay. Big finish. Nice stretch. Pretty significant feather in their map, wouldn't you think? Or in their lap, depending on how you see it. But uh, I love that we keep intertwining these, uh, these oh, Wheel of Fortune. I'm going to leave you with a great dad joke. You know, the only the only casualty oh. of the last couple of days? What? My makeup kit broke. Oh, and that, no. And, and, and now I need cosmetic surgery. Be, like, because it broke, like, and you need cosmetic surgery? I think there's a language gap between us. Yeah, it must be. I don't get the dad joke here. These are cosmetics, <laughs> Marty. Okay, so you need... Oh, well, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I get it now. But that is a dad joke. That's why it's like... Wah, wah, wah. I, and I resist them <laughs> typically, but I thought in podcast form I'd throw one in just for the heck I'm of it. I'm sorry. I totally blew the punchline, oh, no, but that's, that's, okay. Uh, that's okay. Sometimes you explaining know, it is half the battle. And sometimes the I have egg, eyes behind my head, so that's the way it goes, so... <laughs> hey, it was uh, it was an amazing last few days. Thank you for being a part of it. I I, I couldn't have enjoyed it uh, with anyone else anymore. You and I had a lot of time on air and off around all of it, and and it was really great. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I, thank you as well because I saw you and I rewatched the RJ ceremony from last year to see you and how you and Razor did because I was like. I, I've never done this. I don't know what I'm doing. So I rewatched it. You guys had done an amazing job with the RJ and you did an amazing job again this year. And it was fun after the game Thursday when we went up uh, to the suite level and ran into so many people and friends and former teammates and league officials and whatever. Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was awesome. They were all here for Milzy and everybody just adore him. And it was great. Big team effort. Thanks again to one and all, including you at home, because that's what Ryan wanted was to reconnect with you. And to say he did was uh, would be an understatement for yeah. sure. What a week. We'll do it again next time around on Sabres Live Overtime. See you soon.